Good morning. So it is 4 a.m. This is Saturday, which is the white tail opener, and I am going to go sit. So really, we only have one good morning stand set up. So Eric and Martin are just going to hang out here and work on getting their afternoon set and then maybe go fishing. So I'm going to go be the lone warrior in the tree this morning and see if we can't get one of these good deer to walk by. The place that I'm going to sit has had several good deer on camera, but this camera did quit working a while back. So we don't know what's been there like incredibly recently, but I'm going to go sit until probably like 10 or 11 a.m. Try to get in there, try to get in the tree around five and then um, have like a good long morning sit. I'm so stinking tired. I could not fall asleep for nothing last night. But for that, I do have the white monster coming through strong. So got all the gear on. It's all been permethrin down and sat and dried. And now it's time to go see if we can turn up a good buck for the opener. So.
just shot a buck. <laughs> Every time I've ever hunted whitetail, I've shot a deer the first hit. Now, so I'm not stoked about it. Um, it's the deer I want. It's the deer I was here to kill. It's the big tan that's been really regular on this camera. He's a beautiful deer. Beautiful deer. Full velvet and just gorgeous. He walked out earlier this morning at about 30 and I didn't even get a chance at him. It was quartered away really hard. I got, I just got a little bit wound up and I uh, took that shot when he was quartered hard and I was a little cramped in this bow stand, but I mean, nothing to blame it on other than the fact that I got excited. And I hit him um, through the hind quarter, but the arrow angled like right up into the vitals and buried to the fletchings. So I think I got it up in there where it needed to be, but he was probably quartered a little bit too hard for me to take that shot anyway. But uh, it was just... I don't know. I just get excited. You guys know how I get when I go to shoot, and I should have just waited because he would have turned. But anyway, um, Jay's on his way in now. I shot the deer about a half hour ago. He ran about 50 yards into the trees and just stopped and stood there and stood there and stood there and stood there. And then um, he dropped out of sight. I think he died. But maybe not, I don't know yet. So I'm pretty optimistic after watching the video back of the shot that it got where it needed to be. But it's crazy how just missing by like two or three inches from where you were holding can screw up the whole deal. I should have just waited for him to turn full broadside instead of trying to shoot him so quartered away. I just I want my biggest um, problem with bow hunting. I got deer coming, is that I get excited and then I screw it up. All right, so I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a play-by-play -play on what happened here. This buck walked out here, and I got to full draw right here at 20 yards. And I was about to shoot here. He put his head back, so I waited. And then he walked up to the does, and I kept thinking, okay, he'll still just go broadside right there when he gets over the does. Now I'm at full draw, and I'm seated in this tree stand, and he faces away. And I just tried to sneak it in quartering, which was a bad choice. So look at that right there. Look at the angle of the deer's body and the angle of the arrow. It just sinks right where it needs to. It's just unfortunate it went through that hind quarter first. Now, I fully realize that showing a shot like this on YouTube is gonna open me up to criticism, but just know that I understand that and I chose to post it anyway so that you guys maybe could learn from my mistakes and so that I could hold myself accountable for taking that shot and for um, just kind of putting myself in that situation. Realize I'll probably get some flack for this but anyway, let's go find this bug. Oh my gosh, right there. You guys, he didn't go anywhere. He didn't go 40 yards, 40 yards and he's piled up. See, first look at all this blood. Like I was so worried about that shot, but he just bled like a fire hose and died 40 yards. Like, yeah, one, two, three, four. He's a, he's a 10. Oh my. Gosh, dude, that's it. That's the 10 point. That's him, huh? Yeah, that's the 10. That's the deer we are in this stand to kill. I can't believe he died that quick. I was so nervous, right dude. Right on, dude. Oh my gosh, not even 40 yards. We got him, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right yes. On. Look, he's starting to rub, huh? Yeah, he was getting ready. That's all right, dude. Man, I'm so happy that played out Smoking. like that. I, that shot, when I watched it back, I felt a lot better about it. I saw him walk to there and stop. Dude, look at that heartbreak. This is the deer I've been thinking about. That's the stand I've been thinking about. Like everything right there played out how exactly I imagined it. Dude, can you believe that we possibly could be eating back straps by 11? Oh my gosh, dude, look at that deer. That's look at that. Stud. He's a freaking stud, Jay. Stud. <laughs> what a hog. You got him, dude. We had him on camera. You got him. He's got a dropper off the back right here, extra eye guard. Jay, you that's gassed the a monster. To kill. That's the deer you came here to kill. I can't believe it went down like that, man. I, man, I was so nervous about that shot. And let's look at it and see how it's, it's in the hawk on the hind corner on this side. But oh, yeah, dude. Just, oh, dude, it, it buried about here and it came just right up into his vitals. But look at how pretty his coat is dude he is beautiful That's what a, beautiful a deer rock, look man. at that beam on that deer right there yeah huge beam turned up like for a first one <laughs> dude i'm oh this my is gosh. awesome this 
is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Boom. That's him. That's him. Dynamite. Bro. <laughs> Oh, we're just gonna roll up to the house Dude, with this in the truck. You, that's nuts. <laughs> that's Look at there, what a deer this morning, Look at dude. the freaking eye guards on him. Oh, the brow tines are insane. Look at that deer, no oh, doubt. Heck. Look at that deer. Um, I always envisioned killing out here. We had trail cameras of this deer uh, since we were here a month ago. I always figured I'd sit in that stand and hope that this deer came in. And when he showed up this morning, it was almost surreal, but. Really glad that the shot turned out the way it did. I was really nervous about it until I rewatched it on the camera and then I actually felt pretty decent about it uh, just because of the angle. I really only missed where I was aiming just by a couple inches, but with him quartered hard, there's just the margin for error is so small. But I mean, you can't really complain when a deer goes 35 or 40 yards and piles up. So super happy to break in the prime and to be out here in Kentucky. And big thanks to Jay for being here with me today. and. Eric and Martin too for sharing this even though they're asleep. Right. Snoozing. Anyway, super happy with them and now the work. Here goes old Sugar Jay headed up to get the truck. There's the stand that I was sitting in. It's up in that tree. We put that up out here a month ago. And this is where they've been. But there he is, you guys. Like Man, it sure feels good when they don't go anywhere, they just die. I was worried about that shot, but man, what a freaking buck. Look at that. He's about ready to rub that velvet. He's got ticks all over his velvet, but just the deer, the deer that I always imagined getting a crack at when he came out here. And uh, I'm super, super happy with him. Yeah, one day, all this prep work, all these flights coming out and everything for one day. But uh, we still have a bunch of doe tags to fill too, so I'll probably get some of those in on this. Maybe on this trip, maybe on another one. Now we're getting him all skinned up and cooled out, and then we'll be rolling once again. We got it cool. I think I'm gonna do a velvet euro. His meat feels good. Feels nice and cool. So yeah, but I'll leave this. All right, so here's a little update. Um, Eric, oh my nose is itching because we touched that deer and he had ticks all over him, and I feel like I'm just covered in ticks. I've checked like a hundred times, I can't find any, but I feel like they're everywhere. You guys ever get like that? Anyway, um, Eric and Martin are in the ground blind right now at the spot where we had Big Buck show up last um, last couple weeks. They've been three different just like real smokers and a couple nice ones. So they're sitting there. Jay is sitting in the stand that I was in this morning. And I'm going to go up to this box blind right here. And I'm just going to kind of glass the face and see what I can get as far as intel on deer movement. Jay said there was a big buck there this morning. And so I'm going to go see if I can see him possibly get some video of him and um, just gain intel for the morning. So that's what we're doing tonight. Got the snacks, let's go. So this is the evening of day two. We just dropped Eric and Martin off at their ground blind. And I have um, Jay down here in front of me on this hill where I was last night filming those deer. We built him a ground blind. And he's gonna sit on this field and see if those deer walk within range tonight. So I'm just gonna be above him glassing, <clears throat> kind of watch and see what goes down. And so this is um, part of peanut shell because I've been eating cracked peanuts all day. So if, um, anything exciting happens. 
We'll show it to you. I can't believe there's part of this kid that was bugging me it's so hot. So there's Jay sitting in the blind. See what shows up. Maybe a deer will walk out in front of him right there and he'll shoot it. A bug came out right behind Jay. He couldn't see it, couldn't see it. Then he turned around. <laughs> Finally saw it. And it kind of got a little, not spooky, but it just walked back into the trees. It may come back and give him a shot, but it couldn't have been 40 yards from Jay. I wouldn't have expected a deer to come out there. Obviously, none of us did. Made it back. We're gonna be doing a little bit of the back strap challenge. That's what it's called. We can eat the most. Yeah, I'm gonna eat one whole back strap. Jay's got the onions and the mushrooms, the sauteing away, and some Kerrygold grass fed butter. Oh, yeah. got some bell peppers there. All right, back again. So um, I do need to thank some people who bought apparel, and I want to thank you guys for the for following along um, with that video and um, all the positive response we got on social media. Um, thank you guys for uh, your excitement for me. That makes me feel really, really good. So um, I do need to go back. I'm actually going back a little bit before because I forgot some people. So let's see. I need to thank um, David Lofgren. Thank you, David. Mason Lunt. Thank you, Mason. Bo Marlowe. Thank you, Bo. Augustus DeChamps. Thank you, Augustus. That's a cool name, man. And uh, that'll probably do it for this video. So thank you guys for buying apparel. Remember, these hats back in stock at GetShedCrazy.com. I'm going to get this video edited up, and I will see you on the next one for our final installment of this Kentucky trip. Thanks for watching.